neither words nor pictures can freeze Seattle on a printed page. It was a different city a moment before these pictures were taken, and a moment later it had changed again. We have only an instant sight, a brief illumination of a city on the move. It is this fact of swift and transforming growth which has made Seattle. Each generation has known change. Through the years, we have become an increasingly urban city, yet today our city center swells to bursting under the pressures of this growth. In 1928, the population had reached over 360,000. The automobile was here to stay. More people came downtown, and business cried for more room. The growing pains became worse because there was a hill in the way. And this is what this story is all about, the famous Denny Regrade. Four years before the Alaska Gold Rush, a road map of Seattle and vicinity was published. The city limits of Seattle embraced Green Lake on the north and Beacon Hill on the south. Ballard, Sand Point, and West Seattle were separate communities. There were no government locks or ship canal to Lake Washington, but there was a ferry to West Seattle. Madison Street was the north limits of the business district. North of Madison, along First Avenue, was residential, with Dale in the distance. The booming business created by the gold rush in 1897 swelled the demand for commercial building sites. The pressure of this sudden expansion resulted in a series of construction projects known as the regrades. Under the supervision of the engineering department, property was leveled and streets were excavated to more desirable grades. The regrading of Jackson Street was one of the larger projects. It was completed in 1910. The earth was used to fill the tide flats south of King Street. While various units of the Jackson Street regrade were underway, the Dearborn Street project was started, which opened up access to the Rainier Valley. This project included construction of the 12th Avenue Bridge to Beacon Hill. Approximately 5 million cubic yards of earth were removed from Jackson and Dearborn regrades and sluiced into the bay to create building sites. Business continued to cry for more room, and so the spotlight was directed toward the Denny Hill, which eventually was to become the largest regrade project of all. This relief map shows the original elevations and contour lines of Denny Hill. Denny Hill covered an area of 62 city blocks and rose to over 107 feet above the highest existing point in the business district. Pike Street was the north limit of the retail district, and First Avenue was graded through to Denny Way in 1898. Second Avenue was graded in 1902 and Pine Street became the north limits of the business district. The structure shown in the foreground was the Washington Hotel, a famed but short-lived Seattle landmark. The hotel was built in 1889 and was originally named the Denny Hotel. There were no streets leading to the $500,000 hotel. Instead, guests rode from the bottom of the hill at Pike Street to the front entrance in a cable car. Other famous landmarks were Sacred Heart Church at 6th and Bell, the Denny School at 5th and Wall, and Seattle's first park, Denny Park at 9th Avenue and Denny Way. The regrading of 2nd Avenue and Pine Streets in 1902 resulted in such an increase of land values that many property owners on top of Denny Hill began to feel that they could profit if the whole hill were cut down to the level of the rest of the area. The idea was proposed. Meeting after meeting was held, 
and petitions were circulated, but it was felt that the complete regrading would cost too much money. Finally, a compromise was reached and a local improvement district was formed to grade half of the hill, the portion nearest Elliott Bay, an area of about 27 city blocks. The hydraulic method, which had been so successfully used on the Jackson and Dearborn regrades, was used here. Water was pumped from Lake Union, a mile and a half away, through a 24-inch wood stave pipe to the top of the hill. The material was carried through ditches and flumes to a central tunnel westward along Bell Street and dispersed into Elliott Bay. The Washington Hotel no longer existed on top of Denny Hill. In 1926, Seattle had tripled in growth since the turn of the century, and the business district had grown proportionately. The remaining part of Denny Hill was more of an obstacle than ever. Property owners became insistent that an arterial should be cut through the hill to give better access to and from the north end of the city. Once again, petitions were circulated and meetings were held, and another local improvement district was formed with almost no opposition. On September 14, 1928, the city awarded a contract to the George Nelson Construction Company. The contract called for the removal of the entire remaining portion of the hill and the installation of water, sewers, and paving. Clearing operations got underway almost immediately, and one of the first buildings to go was the Sacred Heart Church at 6th Avenue and Bell Streets. And here is a last look from the church looking south on 6th Avenue toward the downtown district. The plan adopted for handling the material under the contract was to move it on belt conveyors from the point of excavation to the waterfront and there deliver it to barges for dumping into deep water in Elliott Bay. Battery Street was selected as a central collection point and an elevated timber structure was built to house the conveyor belt. Under this plan, all conveyors operating outside the construction area would be above street level, avoiding wear and tear on the existing streets and eliminating interference with all traffic. Excavation was accomplished exclusively with electrically operated power shovels. Conveyors were mounted on skids so that they could be moved over the job as the work progressed. These movable units all delivered to the central collection point of the conveyor system. The barges were described as self-dumping. They were built of wood, and designed to carry 400 cubic yards of material. They were built with decks on either the top or bottom, whichever was upright. When it was time to dump, valves were opened to let water into eccentric tanks in the hull, throwing the barge out of balance and forcing it to capsize. The barge remained in reverse position and towed back for another load and another capsizing. Five electric shovels were used. The city provided electricity at the rate of one quarter cent per kilowatt hour. And the shovels chewed away at the hill at the rate of two cubic yards per bite. They were described as two yard giants
The movable belt sections were 250 feet long and were capable of moving up to 500 cubic yards per hour. All equipment operated continuously night and day, six days a week. There was a 15 to 20 minute shutdown after each shift for maintenance and inspection. The main belt system was constructed in three sections and extended over half a mile to the bay. Electrical control for the various motors operating the belts was worked out so that when any belt in the system was stopped, all belts behind it would automatically shut down. For example, if the belt at the waterfront had a malfunction and stopped, all belts, including the movable belt sections, would stop. This prevented the danger of overloading. The record shows that there was not one serious accident during the 20 months of the project. In carrying out the Denny regrade, it was necessary to exercise the right of eminent domain to secure certain properties, because there were a few who opposed the project. Some even refused to have the dirt removed from their property. But sooner or later, these owners had to remove their spite mounds by truck at a much greater cost to themselves. Denny Regrade was completed in December 1930. Four million cubic yards of earth were removed, bringing an end to the infamous hill. Over 10 million cubic yards were deposited in Elliott Bay from Denny Hill since the first cut at First Avenue in 1898. The removal of Denny Hill brought about a dramatic transformation in the north sector of Seattle's retail district. It is best illustrated in the following scenes showing the area in 1928 and the same locations today. Here is 4th Avenue and Lenora Street looking east. This is 4th Avenue and Blanchard. Fourth Avenue and Bell Street during clearing operations. The same location following removal of the hill. And here is the same view today. This is Fourth Avenue and Battery Street. And Battery Street today. Fourth Avenue and Wall Street. The Denny School was on top of the hill in this location, and there was an 87-foot cut here. This is Fourth and Vine. On the east side of Denny Hill, we can see more changes. Sixth Avenue at Westlake, looking north toward the Seattle Center. Seventh Avenue at Westlake. The cafe and hotel buildings on the right are still in use. Ninth Avenue and Denny Way looking north.
and looking west at Westlake Avenue and Denny Way. It's interesting to note that many years ago, plans for the development of the regrade area were under study as the location for a civic center. In 1911, Mr. Virgil Bogue filed a report with the City Plans Commission. Mr. Bogue proposed locating the City Hall and other public buildings in the area of 3rd Avenue and Blanchard, in the center of the regrade. Regarding the civic center, Mr. Bogue wrote, environment has an enormous effect on the personal and civic education of future generations. Given a commodious, attractive center of civic interest, easily and quickly reached, her people will seek it at every opportunity. The boat plan was never adopted. Through the years, the development of the regrade has been a slow process. Now, however, the future of the Denny regrade appears much brighter. Many civic groups and professional organizations are making studies of the regrade with regard to in-city living. Some suggest a major park just south of Denny Way. Others propose pedestrian and vehicular transportation facilities in the same location to link the retail district with the Seattle Center. All agree that there is need for emphasis on more street activity involving business and the people who patronize the area. Out of the vision of those forward-looking citizens who first proposed moving the mountain arises a new opportunity. The city looks forward to sharing the responsibility with the private sector of the community to develop the Denny Regrade to its fullest potential.